So join in prayer today. As Aaron leads us, join your hearts together in prayer before the Lord. That God will grant us for his glory an extension of freedom and disgrace. And in each other. Father, you have said in your word, blessed is the nation of God, is the Lord, and it's a specific thing. Not that we simply have faith or have religion or use the church, but that our God is the one true God of heaven, the one and only, the Holy One of Israel. And we have gathered here this morning, we profess our love for you. We stand for those who might not be able to be here, and even others who wouldn't. We stand here to profess our desire to see a nation dependent upon you. A nation whose laws and whose guiding principles reflect your nature and your character. God, we know there is no nation that is perfect in all its ways. That's the kingdom of God that you're bringing upon this planet. And surely you will bring it. We eagerly await your coming. We eagerly await the time when you will sit on the throne of this world. May we exalt those who exalt your righteousness. May we put in high office those who recognize your principles. And Father, may we do our part as citizens of the heavenly kingdom and citizens of this country. Pray for those who have rule over us. We recognize the role that they play in our lives as an authority and protection. The Lord, not as those that would tell us how and when, what we must do in our worship. May we have the wisdom to understand when to act in a way that might be perceived as rebellious against our government, but Lord, only in a way that's obedient to you, not simply to be reckless, but to simply follow your word and follow your will to be clearly expressed. To God, our country needs great mercy. For leaders that want to do right and don't have the courage to boldly do that. Those that would seek to actively work against you by the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's what we want. We don't simply want people overthrown from my office that seems like a good answer. Probably we want to see the gospel go forward and change lives and change hearts. So that from their hearts they would rule in this land according to your word. The Lord knows that would stubbornly refuse your will. We do ask that they be removed. We ask that through the due and just processes that you've given us in this land, that they would be removed from their place and humble before you, that they might repent. And I pray, God, that repentance would be modeled among your people, that we would recognize the places where we are in disobedience to you. And from this house to the courthouse, God, that those that name your name would represent a life that's humble and repentant before you. God, I pray that some like that church the role that we have in this community would be to show forth the gospel. And be to show that there is no true and lasting answer in politics, but Lord, we are actively involved in the way that we vote and think and pray and, and speak of the way this land is governed. But Lord, that is not the answer. The answer is the gospel. The answer is the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we may not be able to let our nation be represented here, but Lord, I pray that our hearts would be such that our God is the God of heaven. The Lord. May it be our God this morning. May we be humble before you. May we be bold in front of our community to claim the name of Jesus Christ and represent you well. We pray this in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you will, number 599.
distribution. And it's going to be done on Thursday, this week, on Thursday. The time is from 2.30 uh, to 5.30 down at Overthorpe Middle School. And Collins Brothers Produce Company is going to be putting these boxes together. And it's for anyone and everyone. It's a no contact project. They'll put it in your trunk. Or if you want to, Thursday, ordinarily this is done on Tuesday, Wednesday, and on Wednesday night, if you want a box, uh, the Hawkinses bring the boxes that are left over, and you can come and say, last time there were a hundred or so different boxes left over. And, uh, and so they're wanting to get rid of it. If you have people that you know would like to have or need a box, Put your name on a list out front, since it's on Thursday, we don't need it on Wednesday. Put your name on a list out front, on the table out there. Uh, I think there's a clipboard there with a place to put your name. And how many boxes you'd like for yourself or to take to other people. Okay? Uh, you have potatoes and sweet potatoes and carrots and sometimes cabbage and cucumbers and lemons and oranges and apples and all kinds of wonderful things that are just as healthy as can be and uh, they're wonderful for you. Now, if you put your name on that list out there and then you, you can come by the church after work on Thursday from about 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. If your name is on that list, the Hawkinses, I think, will bring the boxes here to the church, right? And they'll be here, and you'll be able to just come here and pick it up and uh, and have it for you. So uh, do that, and that'll be good. It'll be a good thing, and you can be a blessing to other people. Uh, I, I hope you'll do that. And, but if you put your name out there, if you put your name out there, come by and pick it up, okay? Okay. <laughs> But don't let them sit here with a bunch of boxes and say, what are we going to do with this, you know? And uh, so come come by and pick it up. Thank you for praying for the revival at Grace Old Royston last week. I thought we had a good time. Some folks from the church came and were there for some of the services. I appreciated that so very, very much. And uh, I thank you. Thank you for coming. And thank those of you that prayed for that. Now tonight, tonight we begin the pastoral epistle. The uh, book tonight on Route 66, the book tonight is 1 Timothy. Though Timothy was a young pastor and Paul was writing to him, the application, the instruction in the book is healthy and good for all of us. So I hope you'll be here. Then uh, on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, you always right here. Have we gotten to him yet? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. I wasn't here Wednesday night. I was in Royston. So uh, moving along into his life, out of the background, and, and into the actual life of a unique and wonderful, wonderful man that is relatively unknown, but a great, great study. And then also the kids' ministry, 7 to 8, and then Saturday, Next Saturday at 11, at 11, July the 11th, at 8 o'clock, we'll have men's prayer breakfast. And if you can come, if you can be here, guys, come have a bite to eat, fellowship a little bit. I say a bite to eat. You can have plenty to eat. Man, it's good. And uh, so be here at 8 o'clock downstairs in the basement at 8 o'clock, and we'll do that. And then have prayer together, and that's a good thing. Now, if you've not registered, as a U.S. citizen, okay? If you haven't filled out the census form, fill that out, get it sent in, because that way the county gets federal funds for the amount of people that live here, the number of people that live in this county. Now, if you don't do that, well, the commissioner is going to have to raise your taxes. So, uh, you know, so either way, either way you want to do it. But I would prefer you register, okay? <laughs> fill out the census form and get it sent in. I hope you will, as the caution is on you. Continue to be uh, cautious 
Uh, there's a lot of things about this testing. I'm not a doctor, but I read what doctors write. And, uh, you know, I tend to agree with those that I like. <laughs> but we all tend to agree with what we like to hear. But I, uh, I think it is a fact that uh, the doctor wrote that I read that the coronavirus is a virus, a family of viruses. There's a lot of viruses that are uh, under this. COVID-19 is one of those viruses that is a coronavirus. Been around for years. Lysol has had it on their cans and on their wipes. It, it uh, deals with the coronaviruses. Uh, and, but not only is COVID-19 one of those, but uh, many things, many, many viruses that we have. It's a whole family of viruses. Uh, even some common colds are coronavirus. And if you have any in that family of viruses, uh, you'll test positive. And I think that's reasonable and sensible. It makes sense. And uh, there's not a test particularly for COVID-19 but for the coronavirus is what the test is for. Consequently, you get many, 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 many positive. And if you test positive one time and go back and get tested and you test positive again, that's two people. You're one person, but two people have tested positive. And uh, that's a fact. That's a fact that happens right here in our community. And so, uh, so all of these things, we'll pray about this. But just do what makes good sense. Do what makes good sense. Get the oranges, okay? <laughs> Get the lemon. Take your vitamin C. Uh, wash your hands. <laughs> do those things. My doctor told me, he said, wash your hands. He said, you're not going to get it. Wash your hands. He said, wash your hands and just have good sense. So uh, keep all those things before you, all the announcements. And... Uh, just be well, be healthy, and be faithful to the Lord. Offering will be after the service this morning, as we have been doing. And so you, as you go out, you can give your offering, and then also sign up for the boxes, the fruit boxes. And uh, I guess, is it fruit? Is that what they call it? Anyway, farmers to families, food boxes. And so uh, we we'll do that. You ready to sing, Brother David? Yes, what are we going to sing? Dare to stand. Can we sing it setting down? No, dare to stand. Okay. How many? Five ninety-three. Five ninety-three. Take your stand with the Son of God. Oh, be faithful to His name.
1950. And of course, uh, Majesty Music Company is the company that published this book. And Ron Hamilton, his father-in-law, his father-in-law, yeah, his father-in-law, Frank Garlic, and Gloria Jean Garlic, uh, great, great people in the field of music for our fundamental churches, Bible-believing churches, great names in, in music for our churches. Ron Hamilton today, today, suffers seriously right now for Alzheimer's. And and not function as he did, of course, when he wrote this song. And I never sing a song he wrote or hear a song he wrote without praying for him now. And I was thinking as, as we sang, Dare to Stand. Dear Ron Hamilton, Patch the Pirate, most of you know him knowing as Patch the Pirate. Lost an eye to cancer and wears a patch, has worn a patch over his eye. And somebody asked him, a little kid asked him one time after he preached, he said, uh, are you a pirate? <laughs> and he said, no. But he got to thinking about that. What a ministry that would be. Patch the pirate. Patch the pirate. Call it the patch. Develop that. And uh, has had a great impact. And we think of him today. As we sing the chorus again, dare to stand. Dare to stand. Mm -hmm. There Here we are 244 years into this great experiment called the United States of America. And yesterday we celebrated, and I don't know about your community, but I am amazed. Danny, I saw the things you posted from your house about the fireworks. I am amazed at the quality of fireworks you can buy now and put off at your house. My soul! like going to a fireworks show uh, and, and that's all good and that's all fine unless you own a dog <laughs> but if you own a dog it's, it's, it's crazy and our dog this is our dog is a, still a puppy this is his first July the 4th I mean this was the first one and uh, uh, fireworks begin going off a long way you can hear them in the distance and I told Becky I said well he doesn't seem to mind that too much so we went outside for a little while, as puppies do need to do, and uh, and came back in, and I left him on the back porch, a screened-in porch, and uh, I went back into back into my study and preparing for today. And all of a sudden, I, uh, I heard Becky coming down toward the room. This puppy comes in, trembling. Trembling, I mean, trembling. And, and, and there must be an illustration somewhere in this. Because he got to me, whenever he got to me, he got his paws up against me and scratching my leg, trying to climb up my leg to get to my lap. So I got him in my lap and I held him and he settled down. Now Becky wouldn't do that, but you know, she brought him, she brought him to me for comfort. And so uh, I, I comforted him. But I'm amazed at 
you know, whenever the whenever the fireworks got next door and they were going off over our house, it was quite loud. And I should have gone outside to look at them, but I didn't. And uh, the uh, but it got him. It got him. There's a sofa on our back porch. He had crawled under the sofa. Now you may kick your sofa back and clean under it every time you back in. We don't do that. But uh, but whenever he came into the room, he had cobwebs from under that and over his face. I mean, I mean he cleaned them out. <laughs> oh my! Two hundred forty-four years. We were not very long into this. We fought a civil war within this country. And the nation survived. It would have been very easy, quite frankly, for some foreign nation to have conquered us at that time when we were fighting against each other. But uh, God didn't allow that to happen. We've risen to occupy a position of the strongest nation on the face of the earth. Our communications, our transport system, our economic prosperity, and our freedom are the envy of people all over this world. I think the devil hates our economy. I think the devil hates our freedom. Though it's all out of balance, this country is responsible for sending more missionaries around the world than any other country in the world. It is this country that carries the major burden of sending our citizens and supporting them with our money to take the gospel around the world. You said, well, why do we, why do the missionaries, why do we support the missionaries? Why, why don't they go there, become part of that country, get a job and work? And so, because the countries won't allow them to do that. If they're going to come into the country, they have to bring money into the country, not take jobs from the citizens of that country. Now that's the way it is in other countries. It's a little different than here. But they're not allowed to do that. They have to, they have to be totally self-sustaining to come into other countries, or they will not even allow them to come in. So in order to go as missionaries, they have to be able to do that. Uh, but it seems like on every hand, our freedoms are slipping and truth is falling in the streets. Criminals are now protect, protected to the endangerment of law enforcement officers and the endangerment of law-abiding citizens. Law-abiding citizens are being arrested for protecting themselves. It's, a, it's an upside-down kind of thing. It's 180 degrees against what we experienced in the past. Babies are flushed from the womb as if they had no value. And if they survive the ordeal, they're left to die. Uncared for and unloved. And now in some places in our country, once they're born, the decision is made whether to let them live or die. And to walk out on a born baby and leave that baby on a table until it is dead is a sin that God must judge. <laughs> Our highest court has declared that under certain circumstances, private property may be confiscated by the government if it will enhance revenue, not just for the good, 
of the people, of the community, but if it will enhance revenue for the government. We see some bright spots, but it seems like for every encouraging thing we see, there are two things that go the other way. It's just maddening. It's frustrating. And as a pastor, I simply bring to you what the question, what can we do? What can I do? I'm one person. You're one person. What can we do? What can we do as a church? What can we do as individuals? I'll give you three things. Number one, we must remember our roots. We've got to remember where we came from. Psalm 33, 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And Aaron, while he was praying, talking to the Lord, he mentioned the blessedness that God has given us. Now, I know specifically David was talking about Israel, the nation of Israel, and the nation of Israel at that time. <coughs> but any nation who claims God of heaven, the God of the Bible, as their God, is a blessed nation. Whatever nation that may be, be it Brazil, or be it India, or wherever, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. From the time Columbus discovered America until the time the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock to the Declaration of Independence. The independence that was declared was not an independence from God. It was an independence from the tyranny of England and expressed a dependence upon the God of heaven, the God of the Bible. God and faith in God is written into our founding documents, and it's etched into the walls of our government buildings and on the stones of our national monument. And if you want to know why, there are attempts to tear down all those monuments. It's not because the people who are trying to tear them down understand what those monuments are. It's not because of that at all. But it's because the devil knows that etched on many of those monuments is the statement of where we came from. and a belief in God, and quotations from the Bible. And the devil hates that. Now politicians, right or left, conservative or liberal, do not understand that generally. But we can understand that. You see, this is not just a political battle that we're in. It's certainly not just a military battle. It's not just a medical battle. This is a spiritual battle. You say, well, you know, is, is America God's country? Well, America started out in a way that's different than most countries. Whenever the pilgrims came here, they declared in the Mayflower Compact 
that they came seeking to worship the God of the Bible according to the dictates of their own conscience as guided by the Word of God. Same book we hold. Now, the truth is, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. People say, well, this never was a Christian nation. But it was founded that way. The founders of our country, the father of our country, quote, unquote, George Washington, said, we cannot rightly govern without God and God's book the Bible. And the Constitution of our country is written for a people that are morally led by the principles of God's Word. Now, if it is rewritten, it will not be rewritten with any consciousness of God or of the moral standards of God's, of God's word and God's law. You can be sure of that. But I must tell you, no honest, no honest politician, educator, teacher, anyone, can deny, if they've studied history at all, they cannot deny the emphasis on God and the Bible in our country's history. If they know history, they cannot deny that. So the people who deny our country's godly heritage and its foundation on the belief in God and the principles of the word of God if they deny that they're either uneducated or they are deceivers and if they're uneducated they're not qualified to teach our young people and if they are deceivers God help us that they're teaching our young people. Now, some of you here know more about this than I do, but it seems to me that whenever a person runs for office, they ought to be able to pass some kind of a test concerning the area they represent. I mean, if you're going to run for county council in Oglethorpe County, you ought to know something about Oglethorpe County. You ought to know why it's named that. You ought to know the history of the county, when it was formed. You ought to know something about Oglethorpe County beyond just saying, well, I want to get in there and I want to make a law. If you're going to run for an office in the state of Georgia, a statewide office, you ought to know about Georgia. You ought to know when it came into the Union. You ought to know the history of it. You ought to know the charter of this state, what the charter of the state said. I seriously doubt that any legislature, well, maybe some do, in the state of Rhode Island knows what the charter of the state of Rhode Island said when it was written and became a state as one of the first 13 colonies, that it was established under the direction of God and for the promotion of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that was written into 11 of the first 13 colonies that same statement. 
That's the purpose. And though I do not know the charter of the state of Georgia, I dare say there is a pledge and a purpose to sovereignty in the charter of the state of Georgia. People running for office in this state ought to know that history about the state. They ought to know where they came from. If we don't remember where we came from, there's no way to have direction for where we're going. Over and over, Israel was told, return to the Lord, return to the Lord, return to the Lord. The if-then passages of 2 Chronicles in the first chapter, if my people do this, if my people do this, in turning from God, God says, I will send to them pestilence. I will send to them famine. I will send to them war if they turn from me. But if they turn back to me, and that's where the great chapter 7 and chapter 1 culminates in chapter 7, when it says, if my people called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, pray, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin." and heal their lands. We studied three, four weeks ago in the book of Revelation chapter 2. The first church that is addressed is the church at Ephesus. And God says to the church at Ephesus, remember from whence you are fallen. I'm afraid that we're coming to the point that we're so far down this road that it's not a matter of remembering. We're going to have to be retaught because people have no memory of where we came from. People do not know that we were founded and praised the Lord. Even in the song we sang this morning, the Star Spangled Banner, the God who hath made and preserved us a nation. People don't remember that. There are very few, well, maybe in this crowd this morning, it's a disproportionate amount, but how many of you do remember starting your school day with the Pledge of Allegiance and Prayer? You know, a disproportionate amount in this crowd. And in this place where we are, In Northeast Georgia. But do you know the millions and millions and millions of people in this country who, if you were to say to them, school in this country at one time started with the Pledge of Allegiance and a prayer every morning. I don't remember that. I remember that in elementary school. Whenever I went to high school, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. And uh, I remember going to Bible college. And at Bible college, you went in and uh, sat down. The teacher got up. And the first thing we did was pray. And that was, I said, how cool is that, man? <laughs> you know, we start class, and you go to the next class. And whenever you go to your next class, first thing you do, that's the way class starts. Start with prayer. And prayer was kind of casual until it was test day. Then prayer got real serious on test day. <laughs> Someone said, I think rightfully so. As long as there are tests given in school, kids are going to still pray in school. <laughs> but he says, remember from whence you are fallen. I, if we're going to get back to this, we've got to have to remember where we came from. Psalm written some years ago said, uh, remind me, dear Lord. Many things have I... Uh, 
The things that I love and hold dear to my heart are just borrowed. They're not mine at all. Jesus, only let me use them to brighten my life. So remind me. Remind me, dear Lord. Roll back the curtain of memory now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. I know I'm still human. And humans forget. So remind me. Remind me, dear Lord. So remember our roots, our nation, our nation, remember our roots. And then I think as individuals, we must remember. And then we recognize our responsibility. We pray for the state house. We pray for the house of delegates, and the house of representatives, and the house of the senate, White House, but my house, my house, it starts at my house, and I'm preparing for the White House, and I'm preparing for the House of, house of Justice, for the House of the Laws, the legislative branch of our government, but I think we've got to recognize our responsibility, my personal responsibility. My personal responsibility to God as a citizen of the United States of America. I have a responsibility to God. I have a responsibility to thank God. I need to thank him for this land, whether it's the land of my birth or the land of my choice. Whether I came here as a natural born citizen or whether I come here and accepted this country as my country. What difference if I hail from north or south, from the east or west? My heart is thankful for all of the This is my country. Land of my birth. And I ought to say, this is my country. Grandest on earth. I pledge thee my allegiance, America the bold, for this is my country to have and to hold. I want to thank God for this land. Those of you who have been out of the country, particularly if you have been out of this country and fought battles of this country, you thank God. I heard about a, a preacher who went to preach in, uh, in Europe, and he preached there back in the days of sailing vessels, before they had the motorized uh, ships that sail the sea. And he had gone and he had preached there, and it took forever to get there. He was there a long time, and it took forever to get back. And whenever he sailed into New York Harbor, and there stood the Statue of Liberty looking out over the harbor, and he sailed past the Statue of Liberty going into New York. And he looked, he said, I stood on the deck of that ship and I looked up at Lady Liberty and I said, oh girl, if you ever see me again, you're gonna have to turn around. <laughs> he said, I'm not gonna ever leave again. <laughs> and I understand that. I understand that. Thank God for the country. But as I thank him for this country, I want to honor him and obey him with the freedoms that he has granted me in this country. Mm. We have a responsibility to the one who made us and preserves us as a nation. We have responsibility. We have responsibility to the children. Uh, if you will, turn to that very familiar passage in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is the, the guide for Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart from it. From chapter 6, verse 6. These words which I command thee this day. Now, let me back up. Hear, O Israel. 
The Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And then chapter 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them on the posts of thy house and on thy gates. We have a responsibility to our children. And fathers, this basically falls to us. That is our responsibility. Thank God for the godly women who pick that up when the husbands do not do that. But it is basically the father's responsibility and that's great one of the great problems of our nation today and you know that and it is some being some attention called to it and i appreciate every time that it is we have a responsibility we we as americans as holders of truth we have a responsibility to other nations Deuteronomy, same book, chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. Now this is Moses' farewell address to Israel before he dies and under Joshua's leadership they enter into the promised land. Verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh to them as the Lord our God? It, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgment so right, judgment so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? I know exactly what it's talking about. Yeah. You do too. But I'm going to tell you, this nation was there. We were there. And it's still on the books. It's just not followed. Why should lawlessness surprise us when we don't follow the law in our best and greatest days of government? How can we expect this country to work if we don't follow that which God blessed us with? Our testimony before the nation. Whatever, whatever Khomeini, the Ayatollah Khomeini, captured our embassy in Tehran. And an attempt was made, a very secret of the attempt was made, to release those hostages of all those people in the embassy, the United States Embassy in Tehran, Iran. When that attempt was made during the Carter administration, when that attempt was made and failed miserably, horribly, it failed. They had taken our embassy with handguns and clubs. Held our embassies hostage on our own property, on United States property in Tehran, 
Iran. And when that attempt to deliver them failed, Khomeini said, Ah, oh, the great God Allah has proven himself victor and more mighty than the God of the so-called Christian America. Khomeini didn't make it a military thing. He made it a spiritual thing. MacArthur, after the defeat of Japan, said, General MacArthur said, as quickly as you can, churches of America, send missionaries to Japan. <coughs> Sorry. It's not COVID, okay? Something in my throat. <coughs> Number three, we must realize the process of restoration. <clears throat> Proverbs 13, 34. I was looking around here for something. I don't see anything. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sinners were reproached to any people. Righteousness. Just doing right exalts a nation. <clears throat> I think every nation wants to be respected in the international community. I think that's true. I think that's true of cities. Cities want to be respected as well run counties. Counties want to be respected as being efficient in the way they do things and being solvent in, uh, in their... Uh, thank you. Just pour it on my head. I believe that'll do it. Your daddy must have been a preacher. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Sin's a shame to any people. Nations. All forms, all governments, all governments on every level like to be respected by other governments. Whenever, whenever the officials of Oglethorpe County go to a meeting of, uh, uh, of county managers or uh, whatever terms are used here in this county, they like to have the respect of others. They, you know, they operate well. They operate efficiently. <clears throat> they have a real high, real low crime rate, a good tax base and uh, very solvent. They like that. That's, and righteousness will do that. Righteousness will do that in nations. Whenever the G7 uh, representatives of nations around the world and, and our representatives are there, <clears throat> I don't know about you, <coughs> but I feel proud whenever they have nice things to say about the United States. Sometimes I feel proud whenever they say bad things because I like it. the things that they knock are the things that I like. <laughs> but it comes down to an individual duty. If that's true of nations, righteousness exalts a person. But sin is a reproach to anybody. Sin's a shame. <clears throat> I'm only one. But I am one. I cannot do everything. But I can do something. What I can do, I ought to. And what I ought to do, there ought to be a decision that by the grace of God, what I ought to do, I will.
If you were the determining factor in the direction of this nation, if you were the determining factor in the direction of this nation, which direction would it go? You see, each one of us has an area of influence. We have an influence in our family. We have an influence in our community. We have an influence in our workplace. We have an influence in our church. Each one of us do. If I were the de determining factor, and I am the determining factor in my area of influence, I am the determining factor in my area of influence. What direction is it going to go? Is it going to go for God or against God? Is it going to go according to this book or is it going to go against this book? Who would say? Who would say? I'll pray. Prayer is an important factor. A key factor, I might say. Well, I set a time. Oh, I know an attitude of prayer all the time. But will I set a time when I pray? Will I read the Bible and obey what I read? I'm talking about reading the book. Just read the book. Where should I read? Well, if you want to know where you came from, read Genesis. If you want to know where you're going, read Revelation. If you want to know how to get there, read John. If you want to know how to enjoy a happy life, read Psalms. If you want to know how to prosper in your life, read Proverbs. If you want to know how God works, in the affairs of men, read the prophets of the Old Testament. If you want to know how to live pleasing to God, read the epistles. If you want to know how to be like Jesus, read the Gospels. It's in the book. It's in the book. And read it not just for information or just to say you read it. But read it with the idea of obeying it. Give. I'm talking about give money. Give money. Give food. Give. Give. People can give to you to give. God gives to us to give. Give. Learn how to give. Learn how to enjoy giving. Learn how to be a cheerful giver. I mean, you know, walk out of church this morning. Brother Billy is standing there in all of his dignity with his shoes on. You got your glasses hanging down this morning, right there, like that, looking, looking good. Just, ha, 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 ha. Amen. There you go. Woo. Hallelujah. I can give. Praise God. I can give. God loves a cheerful giver. Now, as Bill said, he'll take it from an old grouch. But he loves a cheerful giver. Give. Learn how to give. Enjoy giving. God loves. There's something that delights God. Jesus is standing at the temple and he sees a, a widow come in and she has two pence. It's all she has. And that's all she has. And she takes it over and she puts it in a box. Like he'll stand there with a the plate or like we pass the plate. And she puts that two pence in there and Jesus says to his disciples, look, 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 look at that. He says, she's given more than all the others. And they didn't understand that because the others were going in and putting in big offering, big offering. And here she comes in and quietly puts in two pence. 
But she's glad she has that to give, obviously, because Jesus says, look, look, isn't that wonderful? She's given more than everybody else because she gave all. She gave all that she had. Learn to give. Give for missions. Give for the support of the church. Give for the expansion of the ministry. Just give. Give to people. And tell others about Jesus. Be faithful to the Lord. Be faithful to the church. That's it. It's as simple as that. Be able to stand before the Lord and say, Lord, America went to hell in a hat back. But I did my part. I did my part. God says, you're right. You did your part. I love you for it. Welcome home. Now, you don't go to heaven for being a good citizen. I know that. But God will reward you for obeying him. My father used to say all the time, you give to God, you give to God with a spoon, he'll give back to you with a shovel. And I think he was right about that. I was about ready to put fruit in if he brought me that water and I just kept on going. Let's stand together. <clears throat> maybe somebody here today, maybe all of us here today, I would just come down to the front. That was all. And say, Lord, I dedicate myself to you as an American to follow you, to obey you, to be what you have for me to be as a Christian citizen. Christian first, citizen second. But as a Christian citizen, I give myself to you to be that. And promise yourself and promise your God, if we lose this old country, it's not going to be my fault. It's not going to be my fault. I'm going to do my part. And come and tell your God that. Tell him that. Just take a minute. Sit here in front of me here. And tell him that. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Maybe we're trying to walk with your eyes closed. Look at your eyes and walk with you. You want to walk out and come right on. If you want to do that, and tell God. That's what I want to do.